I do both clinical research and basic research, and actually they're very intertwined. I try to make sure that the, what I'm doing in the laboratory has applicability clinically. It makes them both more interesting and more exciting. My clinical research has to do primarily with strange or rare tumors, and uh, two of them arise in the adrenal gland, the very small gland that we have in the back of our abdomen. And those are adrenal cortical cancer, a cancer that occurs in one to one and a half million people, one out of every one million or 1.5 million. And then a cancer that's a little bit more common, but also rare, which is called pheochromocytoma. And both of those arise from the adrenal gland. Then I also treat a cancer that's somewhat more common, but still considered rare, and that falls under a general term of neuroendocrine tumors. And these three are actually very interesting cancers, and uh, by virtue of being rare, are actually very challenging and very exciting to work on. And so why are groups like Trogue important? I mean, so they're not important. They're essential, they're indispensable. And we can't have a good uh, drug development, period of therapy development enterprise without groups like Trog. Now in the case of Trog, they also not only function as a research enterprise, but they also function as a means to advance proper, the best mode of radiation therapy in the community at large, or in this case in Australia. And that's incredibly important because there has to be an institution, and in this case it's Trog, that is in charge of that, that of you know vetting new procedures, vetting new approaches, and then seeing them as valuable and then transferring them to the community at large. Now what they're also important for is for conducting research, and research is essential if we're going to make any progress, any meaningful progress in the treatment of cancer. And groups like TROG for that are why they're indispensable. The future of radiation therapy actually is quite bright. And I'm not saying that because I'm here at a radiation therapy meeting. Uh, actually, I think they're making more advances than anybody would have thought. Uh, we're able today to give radiation therapy in a more precise manner, which means you have less toxicity. Actually, the other day in uh, talking to the uh, trainees, I quoted uh, a mentor of mine, Eli Gladstein, who was a radiation therapist uh, at the National Cancer Institute. He didn't know he was mentoring me, but he was. And Eli used to say all the time, there's no tumor we can't kill with radiation therapy. It's those pesky normal tissues that get in the way, you know, meaning it's toxicity to the normal tissues that creates problems. But increasingly, radiation therapists are finding ways to, you know, harm less and less normal tissue. and direct more and more of their energy and of their treatment to the tumor. And that's working enormously well and to their advantage. I know that personally myself, in the last year, I have referred any number of patients to radiation therapy that in the past I would not have referred. And now I say, can you have a look at them? See if you think you can do this. Can you do this and spare the normal tissues? And incredibly they can. So that my paradigm for using radiation therapy has changed dramatically in the last year. So I think it's, uh, it's incredibly bright, and uh, so I think if I were a radiation therapist, I'd be pretty excited.